So welcome to another Life in Lockdown series. I'm delighted today to be joined by Gosha. Gosha is a beautiful soul, full of radiance, love and life, and I'm delighted she could join us for this Life in Lockdown series. Um, Gosha, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you so much for invita invitation. Um, I'm delighted to be with you um, during the lockdown, so there is some interaction as well. So my name is Gosia Kmicikiewicz. I was born in Poland. I have moved to Ireland 15 years ago this December. Uh, I live in a small town by the sea. Uh, it's called Yol, but on the sunny days I might to I might call it. Uh, Costa del Yol because it is so <laughs> beautiful. So we have the beautiful beaches, beautiful seaside. I live here, I have three daughters, but I live with two of them and my fiance Lorenzo and my oldest daughter, she lives in Spain. She has her own uh, family already and I have one granddaughter, which I haven't met yet because she was only born in March during the lockdown. Wow. So that's the first thing probably what I'm going to do when all yeah. is finished and I will go to meet my um, granddaughter. And currently as a work, I'm a spa manager in Pot Island Resort. Which is a stunning resort and I'll let you tell us a little bit more about that in a minute. I can't wait to sort of get over there myself. So we're going to kick off with, um, the first question is, what do you do to start your day? What do you do to kick off, you know, sort of the, the, the morning for yourself? So um, basically the, the, the best kickoff for me, everyone is different, but the best kickoff for me is the exercise. But what I do is as I get up from the bed, the first thing what I do, and it's advice from my oldest daughter, she's actually a personal trainer, fitness instructor as well. So she would look into the nutrition side of the life. She always told me, start your day with glass of water, ideally with lemon, and I do have, actually here still with some mint and ginger just to clear your body and get ready for my exercise so i that's that's what stimulates me it gives me a good mood for the day it uh, wakes up the endorphins the the energy and the positive energy for for the day I do myself the sport was always part of my life since since i was a child so it's nothing new mm. they were maybe ups and downs when I was pregnant or when I was kind of, you know, in different stages of the life, but sport was always with me. And recently I fell in love with CrossFit. Nice. This is what I do uh, four or five um, times per week in the morning, half six. So I get up around quarter, quarter to six, um, six a.m., half six, I start the training for one hour and then uh, come back and just get started the day, but definitely glass of water and exercise. That's what kicks me from the bed. Fantastic. And yeah. what hobbies or interests do you have? So we know CrossFit is going to be one of them, but what, what are the types of hobbies and interests you have that light you up, that really excite you to be involved in? Uh, it's actually recently, maybe for the last few years, which, um, because cooking was always as a part of our life as a mothers and wives, and we kind of, you know, we cook because we have to. But I started for the last few years, I started cooking and baking for a joy of eating as well, <laughs> as much as sharing it with other people. So we would cook a lot at home and we would bake. And uh, I would do a lot of Polish food because uh, my fiance, he's actually English. So he's very interested in, um, in Polish cuisine and he loves it. Yeah. So for me, it's kind of a different um, perspective now because I used to cook Polish because we were Polish. Yeah. But now I can see the other, the other perspective of eating Polish food from him where he enjoys it more because he doesn't know it. Uh, but then his amazing skills, uh, culinary skills. So he, we, he would be, uh, I would be assisting him more in eating than cooking. <laughs> with the, the international food and from all over the world and very exotic as well. Um, it's because his roots are Jamaican as well. So there will be lots of beautiful food. And that's, that's probably our kind of hobby together as well. Yeah, that's lovely. And traveling. I would love to extend it more, obviously, as probably everyone, but traveling and, and, 
uh, seeing different culture and people and how they live and the history that's that's probably the most yeah beautiful i'm with you there i'm with you there what makes you laugh the most what makes you kind of properly laugh to your belly um apart from this you know flipping on your phone with the jokes on the social media <laughs> It's uh, at home would be my daughters, uh, the smallest one, she's at the moment 10 years old, the middle one, she's 16. If we have a chance to meet all together and my oldest daughter, who is 25 years old, and they all three meet together, it's a comedy. It's a comedy. We laugh together. We, we used to dance in the morning around the table, in the kitchen. And that's what makes me laugh as well. Just Just make, you know, um funny situations and, and yeah. all this i i love watching them playing and watching them joking with each other and that's what makes me laugh a lot fantastic beautiful children have that ability don't they just they to, do. Light you yeah. up, to light you up now we know you're the spa manager with photo islands so tell us a little bit more about your your job role so um it's a well i wouldn't say like everyone's job because every single job is different. But um, what I love about it the most is that I'm part of a team, mm -hmm. that I belong, uh, that I come to work and I meet so many different people from different countries, different ages, different personalities. And at the same time, as a team, we can do a lot. And this is what we actually always say, that as an individual, you are very important but when you come together and the team works together, we can, we can do huge things. And that's what I love the most. But what challenges me and what makes uh, a joy of work for me is the challenges. So I'm actually looking for challenges every day. Yeah. I'm looking for, it's funny because when I have a project, when I find something that I can improve, if it's either in an individual uh, part of, of the team or spa or myself, or if it's a big project, um, if I find it and I know that we can improve it, that we can do something better about it, it really drives me. I'm actually in the morning, I'm already looking forward to come and okay, what stage we are in the project, what we can do, how can we speed it up? Did we get to uh, improve it? And then sometimes, um, my staff members, they laugh at me because when, when it's done and we proved it, it's successful, I sit in the office like, okay, what next? Yeah. <laughs> give, me, give me something it's like, oh yeah, you better because I'm sitting there. It's like it's the daily basic kind of routine at work. It's, it's not what, what challenges me. Yeah. It's the things that we can improve and make it better. So I love my job. Absolutely my, love my job. 20 years as a therapist since I was qualified, always in the industry, in different kind of um, roles and different um, parts of, of the industry, but always the same. And I love it. And you can, I think that oozes from your every pore, or that really yeah. does. I think from the first day I met you, you could just sense that kind of passion and purpose. I love it, yeah. Pal palpitating sort of at the sort of deep and, and sort of surface level. What, what challenges you most about your work or the profession as a whole? Um, there is always something to improve and yeah. what challenges me, I suppose in a big spa or, or spa destinations in the hotels, we always face this limitation of budget yeah. because we would love to improve, you know, build, uh, build some more facilities or bring this and we know that the budget is only one for the whole resort and we have to split it through the departments. So it's about how you approach your people who can decide about it and to show them that we really need it and the clients need it and it will be amazing to have it. So that's, that's the most kind of challenging. But my personal thing, uh, what I have been struggling very much, but I'm getting better, I work on it, is delegating jobs. Yeah. I wish I wouldn't have to delegate and I would do everything on my own. <laughs> I absolutely know it's wrong. And it's not that I don't trust people. It's just something, maybe it's from the childhood as well, because um, my mom died when I was 12, small girl, and uh, my dad, dad was very ill as well. And I had to kind of, 
you know, do everything on my own. Yeah. And that's probably that built up my personality. And obviously, I bring it to work as well that I do it myself. Okay, just go and I do it myself. So it's not about that I don't trust people. I do. And I have lots of amazing staff members that, that I can rely on. But delegating is my weakness. Yeah. And I do work every day on it. But I, I have been improving and I do delegate jobs, obviously. I, I cannot do everything. Absolutely. I think that's key, isn't it? It's recognizing where you have, and I, I'm probably the same, well, you know, I, I've learned to be able to delegate well, um, and I've learned where my limitations are, but I'm also a solutionist. So I, I'm always looking to just get stuff done and think, okay, it needs to be done. I'll just do it. And, and particularly my, my sort of early sort of management sort of roles, um, I think it's harder, especially if you've come from being in a treatment room to suddenly being responsible for the business. It's, it's a big leap and a big change Amazing of role. as well. When I, when I started and I do now delegate jobs and I see how successful they are, they actually give me more yes. satisfaction than I would do with myself. It's like, oh my God, he yeah. did it or she did it. And it's amazing. It's even better than I would do it. Yeah. So it's just to learn and push yourself into the different angle. Absolutely. And I think it's also getting a team around you that recognize where your strengths and weaknesses are and can go, no, no, I'm taking it from you. <laughs> I'm going to do it. You um, can learn. You can learn from them. Yeah. Absolutely. Beautiful. And so if you were to do any new hobby, if you were to take up any new interest, time and, and sort of money, time and resources aren't an issue. What sort of things do you think you'd like to sort of learn or explore or take up? As I mentioned before, definitely traveling. We yeah. would expand traveling. Oh God, if we have the money to travel around the world, yeah. so many different places and people to see and the culture to get know. Uh, but again, cooking and cooking for people in a proper yeah. way, have a small coffee shop or restaurant or even street food. That's something what is yeah. always, we always talk about that as well. It's like just put this table out and just share the food. And yeah. what's, what's the best? place to meet people it's around the table yeah. when you can enjoy the food together and yeah that's definitely the that would be the two things that i would ex expand yeah. yeah amazing so you can go anywhere in the world anywhere that you haven't already been where would you go first everyone has the book at least so um i have I always had two places I wanted to see. It was New York, which I did see when I had my 40th birthday. That was my bir uh, birthday present to myself. Nice, well done. And um, the other thing is, the other place is Japan. Okay. Definitely nice. Japan, always. Uh, it was influenced by some movies that I've been watching um, years before and books that I read. So the traditional ritual of uh, making a tea, putting a kimono, all the geisha stuff, samurai. So that's, that's my definitely place to go. And I would like to see, obviously, the modern Japan as well. But the mostly I would go to see the traditional yes. uh, Japan. And in April, in springtime, when the cherry blossom, um, cherry tree blossom, oh, just the, the really traditional. And very recently we watched the classic movies, Geisha, Memories of Geisha. And we're yeah, like, oh, yeah. we have to go there. So Japan, that would be my, Fantastic. my that, that's a definite destination sort of for lockdown to be over, isn't it? Sort of new experience. So let's go into a few of the flashbacks. So some of the quicker sort of um, shorter questions. Yeah. Um, are you most typically early or late? Early. Organized. What's the best single day on the calendar for you? Every day. Every day is the best day. Absolutely. There is too many, too good days to pick up just one. Every day. And what's the website you visit most often? Very recently, since the lockdown and nobody can hear, shopping. <laughs> shopping online. Shopping online, yeah, honestly. That's the trap, trap of the lockdown. Yeah, absolutely. What keeps you up at night? Uh, nothing really. Um, if it would be something, they have to say something that would be a good book or something exciting happening in the life. Yeah. yeah. So I cannot wait for the morning to get up. And yes. Eat. Okay. Yeah. The anticipation is too much. What would be your spirit animal or what animal would you kind of want to be reincarnated as? 
I don't really have one, but there is something when I was younger, I wanted to work uh, for life circumstances it never happened. And I don't, uh, I don't regret it because I'm in the job that I love anyway, but I always wanted to uh, work with um, fish and sea animals. Okay. And I admire dolphins. Yeah. Maybe so a dolphin. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. What's the furthest you've ever been away from home? Uh, it would be Costa Rica. Okay, nice. You go to a restaurant, what's the food and drink you order? Oh, very quick decision. It's seafood, fish and wine. Ah, uh, you're like my husband. What's your all-time favourite fragrance? Uh, I would have it always. There would be one that I have always. It's Noah by Kasharev. Beautiful. What's your must-read book, paper or magazine? I wouldn't have, again, I wouldn't have won the best. It's so hard and difficult. Um, but maybe just as an example, I just read it recently. Last year, two years ago, I read Tattoos of Auschwitz. Mm -hmm. And there is a second part of that book, which is the Silka story. And I just read it recently. I just finished a few days ago. And what I love about it is... I. Uh, in general way, I love books and stories and movies that are based on history or yeah. they based on a true life. Yeah. Obviously, this kind of title of and, and particular area of, of history, the Auschwitz and all, that would be very close to us as, as a Polish nation, mm -hmm. but I absolutely love it. So it's not my favorite. As I said, it's very hard to choose one, the best one, because there yeah. is so many and too many. Yeah, yeah. But that's something what I read recently. It's significant, yeah. Okay. What's your favorite song to sing out loud at the moment? In the lockdown, that's something was, especially recently, because that's the only thing we, we that can cheers, up, uh, cheers us up is Bob Marley's song. Um, oh, nice. Don't worry oh, yeah, yeah. about the thing. <laughs> Every little thing. It's gonna be all right. Oh, classic. Yeah, beautiful. That 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 has to be the sort of soundtrack. It to must it. be Lockdown. every day. Yeah, absolutely. And the, and the weather's helped the kind of rhythm of that as well, hasn't it? Oh yes. Thank God. Imagine if it happened in the winter. I know. Yeah, we've been so blessed. So mm -hmm. blessed with this weather. What's the talking about lockdown and movies and more much more TV than most people consume? What sort of TV programs have you recently binge watched? If you have. Uh, there wouldn't be any programs as much apart from the news, just to yeah. keep, uh, keep up on the news and, and um, updates. But uh, because we have lots of time, and I never have time for good movies, we do, we do watch a lot of good movies that I missed because I didn't have time to watch yeah. before. Or we actually come back to these old classic movies. And even last night we watched uh, Dances with Wolves. Oh, yeah, yeah. We cried. <laughs> it was so good. Four hours, we didn't even feel it. Yeah, so yeah. good classic movies or something that um, we haven't watched because we didn't have time before. Yeah, exactly. I think everyone's kind of doing that, aren't they? Yeah. What rational fear do you have? I don't really have any. I don't really have any. No. And what's your favorite place to go to deeply relax? Uh, locally, here, if, if it's possible that I can just get out from the house. Um, it's by the sea, by the rocks. We have a small, we, we have a um, beautiful lighthouse and when you go down by the rocks there is a, there is a kind of a temple. I, I feel it, there is some energy and, and yeah. something you can and just you know be with yourself with your thoughts that's amazing place to be. I, I think any place where you can kind of escape from people and go deep inside to your soul that's that's the any place. And yeah, and I think it's sort of like so natural as well. The rhythm of water and the energy of water is also oh, nature. absolutely healing, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And um, where are we? What um, you can only have one beauty product in your bag. What must it be? Lip balm. Lip balm. Good choice. Wow, good choice. <laughs> Use it for everything. Um, what spa treatment or experience do you wish you could have right now? Oh, that would be. 
I always love someone on my head. So Indian head massage, Thai yeah. food maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. I just said to Tara, actually, I was talking to Tara earlier and just saying, I think we're all going to sign up for like three days worth of non-stop treatments after this, aren't we? Just, <laughs> just we're having... all busy when we open this bus. Yeah, absolutely. Banging the doors down soon. Um, who has inspired you the most or who does inspire you the most? Um, in a life would be my dad. Uh, he passed away two years ago as well, but he would be the one because he was a dad and mom for us uh, since my uh, mom died. Yeah. Um, a big man for me. Uh, at work would be my teacher from college. Jesus, 20 years ago. Uh, I can't really remember why, but I remember her. Yeah, and the way she was sharing her passion, and that's that's probably why I wouldn't remember any details what she was teaching yeah. us, but I remember yeah. her and her passion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. beautiful. Well, that's lovely, and I think as as teacher, it's always nice to think you can inspire someone and make such a difference to to someone. For someone, life. absolutely, yeah, amazing. And um, what's the best and worst advice you've ever been given? Oh, <laughs> okay. The best would be. The best would be, in general, about the life, it would be um, to be good and to care about others, mm. but always remember and look after yourself. Yeah. Because this is what we, especially we, probably women, uh, forget a lot. Yeah. That we, we, sh we care, we do, we, which is amazing because that's, that's, that's the life as well. By giving, we have the joy but we should remember a little bit more about ourselves. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's the best one. The yeah. worst one. Now, the person who was given it didn't mean to be the worst, <laughs> but it, the result of it was the worst for me. Yeah. Uh, to try apply a fake tan. <laughs> so it came up that I did look for a few days like a Oompa Loompa. <laughs> was the worst one. <laughs> Never again. That's not for me. I love it. Fantastic. Oh, dear. I wish we could just do a quick before and after picture. There. Oh, God. <laughs> Fantastic. What's the most memorable gift you've received? Uh, again, well, recently would be my granddaughter. Oh. A beautiful gift. I do remember a um when my smallest daughter was born as well and the reason is that i remember oh all of them but the reason of the smallest one is because she was born on my birthday Aww. so it was a birthday mm -hmm. present but then um i i don't really it's not again you cannot just choose one there was so many books mm -hmm. and cd albums paints flowers or a small yeah. candle or invitation for a coffee, you know, that's a gift for me. And yeah. that's, that's, I think we have everything. So the smallest and the simplest things makes us even more uh, happy. Absolutely. And it is always those things, isn't it? It is when you look back and think, think about that. And that question is quite provocative anyway, but it is always the simplest things that, that kind Absolutely. of make the biggest difference. Yeah. They say everyone has a book inside of them what would yours be about if you were to write one what would your book be about oh there would be a lot there would be a lot again that would be a summary of my life which is lots of love lots of pride lots of fitness lots of food lots of traveling and ups and downs you know basically and about about life and about happiness absolutely yeah it would be a happy book. Beautiful. Well, we all want to read a happy book, definitely, <laughs> especially now. <laughs> so, but the last couple of questions are around lockdown specifically. So, what is the most bizarre or craziest thing you've done since life in lockdown? Okay, the craziest thing is I have opened my Instagram profile. Okay. <laughs> I've never heard it in my life. I do have Facebook, and I have have had Facebook for years. Yeah. But again, I was like, oh, everyone is on this Instagram and it's actually nice because you can do this and the stories. Like, okay, let's do it. So I opened my Instagram. Uh, I don't know if it's the craziest, but it kind of sounds like I have uh, become as a 
grandmother, which is just brilliant. Congrats. I know. And I actually, it's not crazy, but it's a thing that I'm again, very proud of. And I, it gives me so much joy every day is I did my herbs garden mm. in a pot because I don't have a land to yeah. do it in a proper garden, but I did it in a pan. So I have lots of herbs and we pick it up every day for our fresh food and it's amazing and every morning I go and check on it and I trim it so it spread yes. and grows more so amazing look the lockdown. amazing things happening it's, in lockdown I know. what's the biggest lesson you've learned in lockdown uh, probably a lot of people would think the same way it's about that we don't really need much to live good lives yeah and that friends and family and our normal simple basic life is the best yeah we miss this what we actually every day sometimes it's all oh, again the same day oh again this, we all again to work well now we miss it so yeah. realize the the life what we have is good and mm -hmm. we just want to go back to it as soon as possible okay fantastic and last question gosha what do you hope as an industry, so the wider wellness industry, what do you hope as an industry we do more or less of as a result of learning from our life in lockdown? Um, I wouldn't say anything less because I still think uh, we haven't had done enough. Yeah. So what I mean is, um, as we speak, we preparing because uh, as the individual places, individual spas, individual salons, we are putting a plan. We are trying to prepare all the health and safety. How are we going to manage everything? So we do it as an individual, but what I'm looking for and hoping for as an industry is to, as we chatted before, um, that we have some umbrella that we can put spa and salons, spas and salons under to have the proper direct and um, very strict and specific for our industry guidelines. Yeah. Uh, I feel that we are always avoided in a kind of a government big statements. So we need to do it ourselves. And I would love that all spas and salons are under one umbrella and on the same page. I don't want the situation that guests will go to different places and they see different guidelines, different yeah. Uh, procedures we should have all together and to do that we need some kind of authority which we do here in Ireland and we're hoping that we will put as an individual we will put all this information and plans and ideas together and that one authority place will kind of make the, the guidelines for for the spa industry and that's what I'm hoping for. And as you said, we would as we were chatting briefly at the beginning, weren't we, before we kind of started recording, and we were saying that, you know, just having, even when the government talk about, you know, whether it's the UK, Ireland, they talk about what industries or businesses might be able to kind of open in what phases, we always get lumped into hair and beauty, which obviously is too big and vague and sort Absolutely. of brand where we get lumped yeah. in with hotel or whatever. And of course, it's it's recognising spas and salons for the unique sort of category they are. Very specific. Yeah, we need this umbrella to, to go underneath and to know, okay, this is us. This is yeah. what we are going to do. Let's be on the same page. Let's do it all together. And that's what I'm hoping to, to have before the big reopening for all the spas and coming back to new normal. Yeah, and it's seeming positive, isn't it? I mean, the Irish Spa Association is now formed. It's a real beautiful collaboration of people getting involved. And yeah, it's amazing. That's what that, we, that what that we need. Us. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Fantastic. Gosha, listen, thank you so much for coming out of sort of lockdown to join me um, and thank answer sort of much. crazy questions. Um, but it's been a great way to get to learn more about you as an individual. And um, I can't wait to get over to Photo Island to sort of see you and sort of spend time. And I hope you enjoy the rest of lockdown. And I can't wait to hear about how beautiful it was to squeeze your granddaughter. I know. You a chance to kind of be there with her. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks, Gosha. Have an amazing day.